The slides are posted online, LinkedIn joined in. If you want to follow along, if you want to see the coding examples, the slides, uh, please feel free to go grab that and follow along. <coughs> Has anyone ever here had a problem with coding and debugging? I, my hand's all the way up there, completely. You ever had a problem like this? Okay, or your, maybe your problem's not the car falling in the water, but uh, you know, maybe you had a problem is that you can't figure it out. So you, uh, you bring out the big guns over here in the upper left, you bring out the air log, right? Okay. It kind of helps, helps you solve the problem, but then it kind of doesn't work. Okay? So then you move on to maybe you print R's and var dumps, maybe some echoes. And they kind of get the job done. Maybe they drop the crane, drop the car. So they, they can be helpful. Uh, we're going to be talking about xdebug, which would be like bringing out the big crane at the very beginning. Uh, it's a great way to debug our PHP code. A little bit about me. I've been developing for oh, over a dozen years. Master's degree, information systems, a senior software engineer. I code all day, um, working from home in the basement. Um, I work primarily on a drug testing platform. I get people fired for work. Not directly. It's okay. The, uh, we do a lot of drug testing with uh, random pre-employment drug testing, that kind of stuff. As I mentioned, I organized the Utah User Group. If you're ever out there on the third Thursdays, come join us for food and, and discussion. I have a couple cybersecurity certifications, and I write questions and do exam development for IC Squared, volunteer uh, for their certifications. Uh, I love flying drones, fishing. If you want to talk about the outdoors with me, feel free to hit me up. Uh, I have five little boys at home. We like to go outside, spend a lot of time outside uh, playing around. My poor wife is home with five boys right now by herself. I have lived in England. I lived in Manchester area for a couple of years, Nelson, Workington. If you want to talk about those places, come talk to me. Love those places. There's where I live, big mountains, snow, that kind of stuff. And if you're, Salt, Open West is a conference out in Salt Lake area. It's kind of a polyglot conference. It's fun. They have lock picking and other things. That's, that's a local conference to me. I don't organize it, but I help volunteer there and speak. So we're going to go over, this is kind of the overview, high-level overview where we're going uh, with the agenda, the schedule. We have uh, what xdebug is, we'll talk about what it is, we'll talk about why you use it, when you'd use it. I want to make sure we focus on some time setting up, so we'll go over how to set it up, how to install it, get it up and running. Uh, that's an important thing, that many, it's a major hurdle that many people run into, setting it up. And talk about using xdebug. Um, the emphasis will be here will be on with PHP Storm. Um, as the IDE being used, but any IDE can be used that has a plugin. So we'll start off with some live examples. Hopefully the, uh, the live examples go smooth here. Uh, Xdebug, you see a picture of Derek Rathens. He's here in the audience. Talk to him too if you have any questions about Xdebug. It's posted, it's, uh, it's open source, it's on GitHub. Or come talk to me, we'll take some time out, burden off of him. A big thank you to Derek. He's a, a big contributor to that not original author. So, um, have you seen a file like this, perhaps, when we're coding along? We have some, uh, you know, some methods to follow. We have some code to, to debug. And let's say we're running it and we're running into problems, okay? So we're, we, we go to run that PHP file and we get a, it's getting an error. We don't know what's going on. So maybe we go in there and we start you know, adding some echoes, okay, echo line, the value, you know, see, you've seen this before, right? We're trying to figure out what's going on, so we're going to add some echoes in there and other things, okay? Next debug, <coughs> if I turn on the listening here and have a breakpoint set up, will allow me to step into the code and see exactly what's going on. So I can see here, okay, the value is two. Okay, that's good. That's just getting us somewhere. Um, okay, it's still working, right? We're not even hit that error yet. It's still behaving like we expect. We can see the value. We can see what's going on. We see, okay, there's the server values. We can see the class. We can maybe interact with the console. So we can do dollar sign value multiplied by two. This can tell six. Okay, so we know you know value is three at this point. We can interact with the code. We can see what's going on. And we can continue on and, and 
and see that, okay, next up, he's gonna hit that. And now it's gonna hit the problem, okay? So we can start to step into the code. We can see what's how the code is behaving. We can see local variables. We can interact with the class. We can interact with our PHP. A lot of different programming languages have this. Maybe you've used the debuggers on the consoles for JavaScript and interacted with the code there. Uh, Xdebugs give us the ability to interact and debug our code. Continuing on <coughs> with the slides. What is Xdebug? We kind of already went over this part, just a quick introduction. So it's a step into debugger. Uh, my first debugger stepping into was a C++. In the mysteries of that language, I, it was very helpful uh, many years ago. It also has profiling available. We won't go into that, but know it's available. And it uses the debugger protocol uh, for the communication, which is used by some other programming languages to debug p languages. It's been available for about 15, 16 years. Uh, as mentioned, Derek Rethens originally developed it, the author. That's a PHP extension, publicly available. <coughs> it's written in C code. You can go poke around on the GitHub repo and see what it looks like. An open source, it's free, you don't have to pay for it to use it. Why would you use Xdebug? So another analogy, have you ever tried to cut down a tree with a herring? Okay, well, Monty Python reference there. All right, we want to use a, maybe a hatchet. That would work for a tree. Some of the trees are pretty big, though, but you know, it can kind of work. Um, again, this is kind of where we come back to the, you know, are we doing echoes and var dumps and print and air logs? Not that these aren't helpful, but there's perhaps a better way, depending on, you know, our scenario, our situation. There could be a better way to be debugging the code. So the typical process that we, we use when we're not using de Xdebug, we add some outputs, right? We, we load the page. We look for that output, right? Maybe look for the, the line number. We make some changes to the code again. We add some more outputs, and we repeat that over and over. And then we try to make sure we clean it all up because we maybe forgot a few echoes or var dumps or error logs, you know, whatever we're using. And load the page again to make sure it's all cleaned up. Okay, that's a, that's a common debugging without Xdebug. Xdebug's like bring the chainsaw out. Uh, chainsaws are very handy. My uh, family has a cabin in the middle of Utah and we use chainsaws. You know, if you don't want to use a hatchet or a herring try to cut down the trees, you gotta use a chainsaw. Uh, so with Xdebug, you turn on the debugging in your IDE. You add some breakpoints and you run the script or load the page and start stepping into the code. You get far more information. You're not adding lines that are useless that you have to go remove later. Uh, you can actually see what's going on. It gives you live values. You can see the actual values of different variables. Uh, it tells you the code path. You can get a full stack trace and see where the code, ha how, it, how it arrived there and, and what's, what's gone on it's up to that point. Supported by most major IDEs. Uh, as in the examples we're here is uh, PHP Storm, but most major IDEs have a plugin available for Xdebug. It leads to faster development time. Instead of debugging and spending hours debugging, hopefully this, it cuts down. I, my experience has been it cuts down quite a bit. And what may have taken a couple hours turns into a five or 10 minute task. So I'm able to debug and see what's actually going on. I like to also put breakpoints on exception handling. So anytime an exception is hit, then I get an, the code stops and I can see that. Also gives a better understanding of what's actually going on in the code and actually see what's happening uh, and what's, what's occurring. Um, it doesn't require any code changes, as I mentioned, so you don't have to add those extra lines and try to worry about cleaning them up correctly. Uh, you know it's not gonna be in there because you didn't add them in the first place. So it's a good, clean solution for debugging. Setting it up. As I mentioned, if you wanna follow along, turn on your environment, turn on your laptops and follow along, feel free. And uh, the slides, again, are posted, linked on joined in, so if you want to follow along and, and look at the instructions. If you don't have it set it up, if you don't have it set up yet, and that's your struggle, your hurdle, get it turned on now. Let's, let's try to work through it. Um, and I'll be available afterwards, too, to help set up, too. Documentation, 
JetBrains has a really good uh, documentation for setting it up. The first idea is you need to install Xdebug. We'll go through each of these seven steps in depth, uh, but the, the kind of the overview is you install it, you prepare your IDE, uh, set up some breakpoints, activate your debugger on your server, uh, on your IDE, um, start the debugging session, whether that's in the browser, we'll go on how to use it with, with RESTful clients um, and terminal. Uh, reload the current page, run the script, and we have to set some server pathings. We'll go into all this. Make it easy. Xdebug has really good documentation. Uh, they have an installation instruction page. You can follow along. Download, if, if applicable. Uh, install it or compile, depending on what you're doing. Uh, you configure your PHP to use, to know how to use the Xdebug, the, the different settings with it, and restart your, your web server. The easiest way to install it, if you don't already have it, get clone, you clone it down, CD into there and rebuild. Run that script and it's going to go do all your makes and your, your cleaning up and so on. Okay? So, three main uh, operating systems that we're using for development. We'll go into each of these as well, just briefly. Uh, with Windows, there's basically an next debug install screen. You copy and paste some stuff in, and it gives you the file. Uh, and if you're on Mac, sudo pickle install xdebug uh, or brew. Linux, you can wget it and set similar thing, install it. Uh, with Windows, as mentioned, there's an IDE. Basically, you do a PHP I or your PHP info. You copy and paste it into a text file or whatever, and you paste it in there, and it'll give you DLL to install. Really easy, made it, made it really simple. Um, then you restart your, your web server, and you'll be able to start using Xdebug. Um, again, if you're on Unix-based systems, we have the wget, you know, tarball, XCD, Xdebug, 2.6 the current, PHP is config, configure, enable debug, make and make install. Uh, but if you're doing that first inst set up instructions, that'll tell you that the, the that sh file will uh, install it for you, do all these things for you. But if you're uh, if you're not, if you can do one of these steps too. Yum install is another another version of it, if, depending on your obviously your operating system. So we breeze kind of through that. Again, these slides are all posted if you want to follow along. Um, the, the easiest is that first, uh, uh, the first instruction I gave. So update your PHP I and I. You've got to add a few instructions. Uh, you want to make sure that you have Zen extension um, for the pointing to this is on Windows or if you're on a Mac or Linux uh, to wherever the uh, debug is. And then you have a few settings. So for example, remote enable. These are the settings I like to use. Uh, remote, remote auto start set on, port 9000, uh, your host, and IDE key is very important. I use PHP Storm. That's the, most, that's the suggested one for PHP Storm. Okay. Then restart our browser, our web server. So on Windows, you go to the services, you find the Apache monitor, and restart it on Unix systems, sudo apache control ttl restart, or if you're using nginx, the nginx restart, and that'll pick up on the changes and let you use it. I like to verify that it's actually working, that's very important. Uh, you can do a simple PHP info page and search for xdebug. If you're on the command line, you can do php-i, pipe it to grep xdebug and make sure stuff shows up. So if you have your PHP info, it might look something like this, okay? You know, that's, it shows you that it's there and it's available and ready to use. If you hit command line, <coughs> grep xdebug, and a bunch of stuff will spew out, okay? And, okay, you see that's there and it's, in, it's enabled. Um, you can also get the, 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 where the instructions to where your INI file is for xdebug if you want to change any, any settings there. And to prepare PHP Storm, so PHP Storm needs to know about Xdebug. Uh, 
you gotta tell it to start listening for database or for the connections. So there's a handy little button, looks like a, a telephone, and it's hung up. You click it, and it becomes the second one where it's green, so it's listening now. Uh, so now your PHP Storm is set up to, is, is, is listening for these incoming connect connections uh, to debug using xDebug. There's a menu you can run. You can also start it from down here, start listening to for PHP debug connections. There's an alternative place to start that up. And you have a bunch of settings. So we'll flip over to PHP Storm to show that one a little cleaner. So if you go to your settings, and uh, go to PHP for debug. You see it okay? So you have some simple uh, things here. So you have ignore external connections, break a first line of PHP scripts. This one's especially helpful uh, when you're first trying to get xDebug started. So it'll stop on the, on, on the, first, the first line of any PHP scripts that come in, uh, rather than having to go set a breakpoint and figure out, it, maybe you don't know where it's coming in from. Uh, that's, that's another good time I've found to set that, turn that on. Max in with max in connections at the same time. I mean, tenuously. Uh, you can tell it to listen to a different port. Um, force break when there's no path mapping. Mapping. We'll get into path mapping here in a second. Uh, force break the first line outside a project. Uh, Zen debugger and evaluation. I won't go into those ones, but this is the main place to go set up uh, to uh, change those settings. Okay. Then you can see it there too. It's in the language and frameworks PHP debug. Project mapping, mapping. So on PHP, there's servers, the server section. We'll flip over to that one too. So I usually just search for server, and PHP server shows up. So in this case, we have xdebug.demo. Okay, there's something just in your Etsy host file or whatever it's your file you're using, a URL, and you set up the pathing, so mapping. So this is the, uh, in this case, this is running on a Vagrant VM. So it's var, www, html, xdebug is where this one's sitting. You can also map it up further if you wanted to, so technically I could do it up here or even up here. So you, know, you could var, www, would set it up to run for anything underneath that directory. So make sure you set that up. Uh, if you don't have it set up, it won't pick it up or it'll start prompting you and you have to go set it up anyways. Okay. Jump back to the presentation. Okay. So after you get that set up, uh, we want to set a breakpoint in our source code. So we want to be able to stop the debugger and, and, and step into that code. Try to hit a line you know it's going to be hitting. Um, it has to be executable line. If you put on a blank line, it's not going to hit. So I'll make sure it's on a line, um, or or break on that first line. Like I mentioned, turn that setting on. You can make sure that it hits the uh, the code. And make sure it's going to stop. So in this case, we see a step into setup. A break point over on the, uh, the in the column there, the red circle. And when the code reaches there, it'll stop. Uh, acting, activating debugger. So when I say server, it's just a client. Uh, so usually like a browser plugin, if you're using a browser. Uh, every browser has a bunch of these. There's not just one. These are ones I found that are easy, um, uh, quickly added on. So for Firefox, there's easiest xdebug. Chrome has xdebug helper. Safari has xdebug toggler. Uh, and xdebug launcher for Opera. So depending on which browser you prefer or need to test with, there's different ways to turn that on. And it looks like that. So in this case, it's just a little button. Um, I'll, I'll walk over here and point it out. It might be a little hard to see. So right there, this is going to add the button onto the uh, browser. 
And when you click on it, it's going to essentially add, you know, I'm a cookie. That tells Xdebug to go ahead and turn on. Um, so in this case, step into, it's going to tell it to stop, and the, uh, and the IDE is going to pick up on that connection, and you're going to start debugging on that specific spot. Chrome, again, kind of similar thing. We have a button that's added. Um, and when you do that, it's going to start debugging into that spot. There's a few different ways you can do it. You can also add a URL or add a git parameter of x underscore x debug underscore session underscore start equals the um, IDE key, which in our case is PHP storm. Same thing with the post. You can add another post parameter. Um, that will also initiate those. You can also alternatively, I should say, have a header. A header with the name of cookie with the value of xdebug session which equals IDE key, which is PHP storm for this scenario. You can also make a bookmarklet if that's something you want to do. And all these different ways will initiate that connection. So over here we see you've got the URL added on to have question mark xdebug session start equals PHP storm. And now the browser will pick it up without having to add that you know, little plugin. If you're using something like Insomnia or some other sort of REST client, uh, this one has a header uh, where it's going to be added in. I'm sorry, this is the URL. So it's, it has the URL added in xdebug. And so when you go to submit this, your IDE will pick it up. Okay, so you can use REST clients to do that as well. In this case, it's using the uh, header. So I added a cookie on that tab. On the post, you can go to the headers tab, cookie, and then add it. All of them have a different way to add the, most of them have a way to add the header there. And this will, again, will initiate the next debug connection. If you're using REST client, another common one we see, you can add it to the URL in the, uh, with a get method. Uh, or if you're using a post, you can add it to the post headers. You can add a cookie X debug session again uh, to start off that connection. Anyone using SOAP? SOAP, anyone? I'm one of the few of lucky ones, huh? Yeah, there's a few, okay, a few lucky, raise, hands are raised. SOAP UI, so in the drug testing world, for whatever reason, they really like SOAP. I don't know what it is. A lot of the systems, legacy systems we have to interact with, we usually have a RESTful API available that we provide along with the SOAP version because everybody likes SOAP in that industry. Uh, so if you're using new SOAP, like this example, or sorry, not new SOAP, that's an old library. If you're using SOAP UI, would be another example here, where you can add it to, add to the URL, you can add it to the header, so in this case we have a cookie, you go and add it down to this section down here, and you can fire off your connections, so when you're using a, a SOAP API, you can uh, also initiate the uh, debugging. So it's really important, that's one of the biggest hurdles, is getting it to actually start up. Uh, once you get it started up and it starts working the first time, it's like, okay, now I got this. And so understanding that you can do it with all these different tools. It doesn't just have to be through a browser. You know, it can be through a RESTful client. It can be through an API client. It can be through your command line, your terminal. It can be in lots of different ways you can start this up, uh, depending on how you're developing, how, you're, how your process looks. So it's important to remember that and to uh, know that your different browsers, your different tools are going to have different ways to initiate these connections. So you click on the little debug button in the toolbar, or add the get, or add the post, or add the cookie. And that's going to help you get started on your, your, your connections. It's going to help you to be able to start debugging. We load the current page, and it's going to ask you to set some initial path map mappings, uh, if you haven't set this up already. So again, this is just the servers, where it's just basically telling, you, telling the, uh, the, the client this is where the code sits on the, the server that's running. Now, if this is your local host, you might, you know, your local machine, the paths can be different. Um, if it's the absolute path on the server is what it's asking for. So in my case, bar www.html. Using xdebug. So there's a whole bunch of different settings that you can use with xdebug. 
um, and lots of nice things. We'll get into those. There's breakpoints. We have stepping through code, watches, and console. We'll go through each of these and go through some of the buttons maybe you, ha you haven't used or some of the features you haven't seen. So breakpoints. Um, you can go and view where the actual breakpoints are. There's actually a different screen for that in PHP Storm. We can go and view all the current breakpoints, which is really handy when the code starts stopping and you want to go remove some of those. It's a good way to manage them all in one spot for your project. So it's, it shows a collection of uh, where all your breakpoints are. You can have as many breakpoints as you want, and you can have conditional breakpoints. Conditional breakpoints are very helpful, especially if the, the breakpoints may be in a loop and where code's being ran multiple times. Uh, it acts just like an if statement. So you write, you know, dollar sign value equals 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 true. And if that condition is returns a true or is true, that condition is true, then the code's gonna stop. That conditional breakpoint will be hit. Um, I often find it for like, you know, maybe you have you know, customer name equals something and you want because it's certain customers having a problem. And so I'll add that to my conditional breakpoints and see what's happening for that specific customer for their ID, rather than having to run, you know, run through it every single time. So very helpful to do conditional breakpoints. There's a placement strategy. It's, it's not just drop it everywhere or somewhere. Uh, you know, you want to have it, you don't want to have it too early. Uh, otherwise, you'd be stepping to a lot of code and you maybe you forget a certain step into versus step over, which we'll get to in a minute. You don't want to have it too late or you're going to miss what happened or the exception might be hit or make error, code might error out and you can't see what's going on. If you have too many, it becomes tedious, it becomes hard to manage. Uh, if you have too many, it's just, it, it's just cumbersome. Um, also, you have to consider things like the time limit, okay? If your code is some amount of time you need to run it in, or if you're, uh, maybe your, your UI has you know, a 30 second timeout, right? And you're stepping into the code while a request is going out. You know, the, the UI might stop or listening for it, for example. So that's something else to consider. If you have too many or having to step too far, the UI might, you know, must stop listening to you, and that's, that's depending on how you have your UI set up, it might be fine. Um, so, in this example, we see a couple breakpoints again. So it's on the instantiation, and we want to see the hidden value that maybe the value is coming out. Okay, so it's going to stop at both those points. Here we see all the breakpoints available. You can also manage the conditions here, so you could say this condition is, you know, whatever condition you want to have. Tell it to log message to the console. You can evaluate spe specific expressions. Um, you can tell it to remove the breakpoint which once it's hit. Well, that one's very handy. Uh, you know, if you want to remove that breakpoint, you only want to see it once, and then you want to remove it, and that's a good spot to do that at. So stepping through the code. There's a few different key commands to run. So you have the play, which will basically tell it to continue on executing as it was before. So your code will come through, you'll be stepping into things, you hit play, and the code will continue on. It's function F8 if you're on a Mac. You can also tell it to stop. So you wanna kill execution basically, you wanna tell it to stop what it's doing. You go and terminate the script. Um, you have view all breakpoints over there and disable all breakpoints. It's really helpful if you want to turn that off and just let the code run again. Um, but you'll be able to turn it back on again later without having to go find them in the lines of code and click on a column. So we also have the concept of stepping over, stepping into. So this is the uh, scenario where you have a piece of code where you want to step over the line. Uh, where step into would be, if it's calling a method, it's gonna step into that method that's being called. So if you're instantiating a new class that has a constructor, for example, and you step into that, it's gonna go into the constructor, and it's gonna step through that. Or if it's calling to a specific method, it's gonna step into that specific method, and you can see what's going on. So if you, you know, following through into the method. The step over is gonna ignore that, it's just gonna go on to the next line in that file unless it hits another breakpoint somewhere else. Um, four step into, again, just four step into, uh, step out. So step out is gonna jump out to the next 
layer out uh, of, this, of the uh, abstraction level. So for example, if you're in a class and you step out, it's going to jump out of the class, go to where it was outside of there. Another very helpful one is run to cursor. So if you have your cursor set somewhere on the, uh, the, the, the file, it's going to keep executing the PHP, or PHP until it gets to that specific line, and then it will stop for you at that line. That one's very, very helpful. Um, <coughs> when you're trying to, you know the problems between point A and point B, um, but you don't want to have to go set up a permanent breakpoint, for example. Uh, you just move your, you know, you're, you're moving your cursor through the code and say, okay, run to here, and then I'll just run to there. Evaluate expression. This is one of my favorites. Um, just to be able to evaluate and run some PHP code and see what's going on. Um, uh, it shows the uh, value of the address is another thing you see, uh, the value addresses, memory. Uh, you can hide empty super global variables, it's on by default. Um, you can add methods to a skip list, so if you want to skip all constructors, for example, or you want to, you know, there's a certain method you always want to just skip, uh, you can add that to a skip list, and it'll always be skipped, and you won't have to see it. Yeah. And there's watches. I'm wearing a watch, it's not that kind of watch. Uh, it's the ability to see live updates on specific code. You can add you know, maybe a value or a method call or whatever, and every time, every line is gonna update that, that value. So you can see what is being, well, what the, watch the value essentially, right? So you can see what's going on with that value, see what's going on and, and know how to interact with that. Uh, it's another very helpful one if you're having a problem with a specific area in the code and it's you know, unsure what's going on, you can see that. Uh, you, again, you can have expressions in there and see what's going on. The console, the console is another area I love, uh, thing I love to use. Uh, in this case over here, we have code that you can run and see what the output is. So if you have your code break at a specific spot, uh, you're, you're, you're debugging this pause for a moment, you can go in there and start running some commands. And, and interacting with the class, or seeing you know, what a specific value is, or seeing if the conditional is working or not. Um, you can do the same thing with watches, but the console is kind of handy if you want to just kind of one off, start running through a bunch of commands and see what's going on. So that's a kind of an underused feature I find uh, that I really enjoy, I really like to use. Um, my typical day of development, I have xdebug up and open. I use it pretty much every single day, many times. Uh, just because of the help it provides me, the insight it gives me through like the console, through the watching, and with development. Uh, just really helps ease the development process, makes it easier to understand what's going on, and when, and why, and how. So we're gonna do a quick summary, and then we're gonna go into some more live coding examples. Um, we're gonna go into actually using the console, actually using uh, Break conditional breakpoints, and we'll see how that how that works and behaves uh, before we get to the summary. Actually, so jumping back over to the IDE, we'll close out the uh, settings, and so let's say we have this is another classic problem, right? So in PHP. If you, if, if you try to divide a number, what, what's going to happen? Can anyone ex uh, predict the behavior here? We have a really large number divided by a really the same number plus one. Anyone know what's going to happen? Any guesses? Someone be brave. What's going to happen? It's going to be someone. I, hear, I, I can hear some whispering. It's going to be one? Yeah, so if, if we... If we run that over here, it's going to give us a double of one. Good guess or experience. Uh, that's not truly the answer, though, is it? It is for PHP. That is expected behavior. But that's uh, PHP is going to output one. Yeah, if you're using you're trying to do some maths within PHP, you're going to want to use the libraries like VC. BC divide, BC, BC add, BC multiply, um, and the other math libraries are very good. But if you're a developer and you have a, maybe you're working on a financial institution, you have some transactions, 
maybe you have some specific, you know, want to make sure your values are they're, they're very specific on what you're getting. And so you have a, a problem reported to you. And you know, you've, you've narrowed it down to this specific little area, and you want to see exactly what's going on. You know, if you're running it, you see, if you're just running it in the, in the UI, you might not notice it. And you might just keep debugging and adding your error logs and echoes and so on. With xdebug, you can come in here, add the breakpoint. In this case, let's go to the browser. Hit divide.php. You can note over here I have the, uh, the set to debug over here uh, to enable the debugging. On the IDE, I turned on the debugging here with the little telephone. And now I have the value. So I can see, if I come into here, I can go and here's the uh, step over. I can now see that the value is equal to one. So what I could do is I could say, let's say if you want to hit the va this break point here. Um, so there's a condition. Let's do dollar sign value is not literally equal to 1.0001 or something, right? Because that's what we're expecting. We know that's what we want, but that's not what's happening. So if we go to the command line again, it's going to it's going to stop there because that value is not equal to that. So now we have a conditional a conditional breakpoint. We see that's working and it helps us to determine where the problem was. So now we can actually see what's going on. I have a watch over here, so you could add another watch of um, dollar sign value divided by you know one or whatever you wanted to do, and it would tell you that's equal to one. So you can have different watches added in there. And as you step over the code, you can see what that, that was, was happening with it. That's a really good way to find problems, you know, apply it in this, kind of this way, where you know you have a specific problem, you know it's in a specific area, and you can apply those different conditionals. Um, it's a right click in this case, by the way, to uh, add conditionals um, to, uh, to stop the break, or to stop the code. So let's say we have another scenario. <coughs> we want to fall into the methods. Um, I'm going to remove the. Uh, so now we're going to clean this up because we, like we don't want to have that in there, of course. Because this, this is going to production. This is serious. And we don't want to have var dumps going on in production. So let's say you want to follow some methods. Maybe you don't understand the uh, logic flow that's going on with a specific class. So you know you want to start, you want to have a breakpoint in the start method. And there's a few different methods, that's, there are different layers it's going down to. So maybe you want to stop it at the instantiation as well. Okay. So down here we'll go, um, there, so we see the instantiation and step over that. <coughs> we can see the dollar sign follow value or follow is a, a follow methods. We want to step into that. So we move to the step into button. It's going to step into that first method that's being called. Uh, we can see the value is equal to, we know it was passed in there. And we can step over that again, or step into it. We can say, okay, what's the second being called? Um, okay, so now the value is four. Okay, then we can step over. So we don't want to go into the third one, we're fine with that. Um, so and you can use this to step into all into different methods and see what's going on um, with, your, with your application. In this case, it failed on the third one. Um, we, we can see that because it, it hits the uh, three, which is a string, and we're using PHP 7. We're expecting an int and want to return an int, which you pass a string in. Obviously, that's going to fail because it's not that same type. Okay? Um, another example, maybe we're having to deal with some array keys. And you want to see how array sorting is working. Maybe we have a problem with our sorting on arrays. So we know that there's going to be some uh, uh, casting going on here. So we can set a breakpoint on that. And go PHP array keys and see what's going on. So we can see the array beforehand. And we see this is what it's going to look like. 
we can see how it was built beforehand. And if we step over that, we're going to see what it is after the case sort. We can see you know, the, how it shuffled and how it sorted. So it's very helpful to get an idea of how PHP is behaving behind the scenes, uh, to give insight into how it's behaving. Um, we can go into let's see, another one here. So this scenario, we have another array um, where we have a bunch of different breakpoints. And we want to know if, if it's true. So PHP, if you, ha if, you, uh, if you do an if evaluation on a value, it, it, it's kind of funny. And, and I have ran into a problem where we had code was behaving not as expected. And it turns out that we had a string false. Okay, string false evaluates to, what does it evaluate to? True, yay. <laughs> Which is expected, we, if we get into deep, the PHP code, we know it's expected because it's not an empty string and it's not equal to zero. So if you run into that problem though, <coughs> this is a good way to debug into that. So we can clear that and go PHP bool. Okay, so now we see the value, we have a true. Okay, that's great, that's what we want. And it's gonna hit true, that's what we expect. And we have value one, that's true, it evaluates to true in an if statement. We have a string one, okay, it evaluates to true, that's great. We have a string false, it evaluates to true again. We have a string anything, and it evaluates to true. We have a null, that's gonna hit the false. We have an array, Wait, array, an empty array. You see it's just the, the, brace, the braces there, the brackets. And it's gonna be false because it's an empty array. 12.34, true, okay? So it evaluates that float as a true. We have zero, another, which is true. That's a little trick one because we had zeros in it. Um, and the value false, or zero is gonna evaluate to a false. And a string fault zero is going to evaluate to false as well. So we can use xdebug and the IDE tool layover for it to start getting an idea of why our code is failing, get a better understanding of, of what's happening um, by setting these different breakpoints strategically, stepping into where we need to see what's, we need some more information. Jump back over to the presentation here. So kind of a summary. Uh, we see that xdebug is a more efficient way to debug. We know that we have problems with our code. It's not always flawless. It's going to have problems. Um, it provides a much better way to debug than adding in developer lines, we'll call them. It gives visibility into our code. We can understand better what's going on. Uh, we can know if our co you know, what our code is, how it's truly behaving. We can see where it came from. We can see the methods that were called. We can see the memory being used by that. We didn't go into the profiling, but um, we get a better idea of what is going on. We have the ability to change code on the fly. We can change values. We can use the console. We can interact with our PHP code. We can watch for specific values. We can see what exactly a value is equal to. We can get the data type out of it, right? An echo is not gonna tell you the data type. Or if you're in PHP, you can see that it's a string. You can see if it's an int, or bool, or null, or resource, or object array. Uh, we can watch this line by line without having to add all these different lines of debugging code and get a much better understanding of how the, the code arrived where it was. So I wanted to have some kind of discussion time. Uh, where we kind of ask different questions and get, get feedback as a group. Because this is something that a lot of people use or hopefully can use. Um, so we want to talk about some, these are different topics we kind of want to focus on. So what are some setup issues that people had? I know, I know that's a major hurdle that a lot of people run into is just setting it up. So what are some issues that people have run into with setup? And how can, we, how can that be helped? How can we help with that? So I was using Xdebug with um, 
uh, Drupal and Postman, and that was working fine. And then I moved to Docsal, and for some reason, I can't get it to break from Postman anymore. Hmm. So X debugs up and running, that's all great. But when I fire in a request from Postman, no break, <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, so great, great scenario we run into a lot, right? So maybe we're trying to do something different. Um, where it's not, it just stops breaking, right? So you add, are you adding breakpoints, I'm guessing? Yeah, and I'm adding breakpoints. Um, I can get those breakpoints to trigger if I'm kind of calling a function internally. Yeah. But because it's coming from an external request, I've tried the cookie method. I've tried putting stuff um, in the URL. I just can't get it to go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So that's a really good question because that happens quite often. So we get a different request. Maybe we're using a different tool. Um, there's a few different things to check on those. Uh, so as mentioned in the, the PHP storm settings, for example, uh, there's the remote connections specifically, or we can, or external, I should say, to allow external connections. That could be one thing to check. So that's another major thing. So when you're setting up, you got to make sure that if you're using external connections uh, from different different machine to check the external settings. Um, another one is the remote auto start uh, setting. We men I mentioned that in the INI. That really helps uh, with uh, automatically starting it up. Um, so there's, there's a few different things to check with that. Uh, but those are usually what I've, what I've found, at least, has been the two of the big things. Another thing is the, uh, the mapping on the server. So we mentioned the absolute path on the server. So that's another major thing to get set up, make sure that's, that's correct. So if it changes, for example, we want to make sure we update that. So very good question. Any, any other questions about setup? So I know that's, like I mentioned, that's, a, that's, that's half the battle right there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was looking for just-in-time debugging, so to automatically add a breakpoint when there is an exception or a warning. Okay. Yeah, so the question is about how to automatically add it. Yeah. Uh, I, what I found, I just go and add the, the, when I'm working on new code, I'll just put breakpoints in my try catches, and then as I go along, it's going to get hit. Um, that, that's what I have found. I put it at the highest level, too, I can. You know, so if you extend it, you know, they're going to put it up higher so it gets caught. But, but yeah, that's a good question. So Derek says that there's a, a, an option to stop at exception points. Yeah, so that would be, that'd be the best answer right there. PHP storm, he said. Any other general setup questions? Because this is something that a lot of people have the same problems. So um, this is not so much a setup question, but... Uh, I often find, I mean, I know Xdebug's there, and I know it's great, but I find myself it's quite a simple problem, so I'll just do a var dump or a, a die or an echo or something. And then you get sort of drawn into that track and you sort of forget that Xdebug is there. So how can I be sort of more um, rigorous about using the, the tool in the first place? So how do we really leverage this tool yeah. in, our, in our daily development? Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good point. I, in the past, I've forgotten about it from time to time as well. And someone says, hey, why don't you use Xdebug? It's like, oh, yeah, I've got that, right? Uh, I, I don't do that very often anymore. So I'm using it on a daily basis. And really, I found that I make sure I have my, and one of the first things when I start on my IDE is I go and make sure that I have my Xdebug listening. You know, I have multiple projects going, so I'll, I'll make sure the other projects are all turned off and that only one is listening, and I'll make sure it's on for the one I'm currently working on. <coughs> for me, that's been, you know, it's kind of, I get it into my daily process of getting started up for the day is to add that, you know, setting up the xdebug into that list. You know, so I'm going to fire up my VMs, you know, maybe if you're using Docker or, you know, you're connecting to the server, whatever you're doing, uh, you know, have that be part of your initial setup is, you know, getting up and running for the day is just having, turning on your debug connections. Oh, yeah, excellent. Yeah. Any others in that, in that area? Questions? Um, profiling. We didn't really talk about profiling. Um, so Xdebug has very robust profiling. You can uh, go and see exactly what's going on and, uh, and, and see that. Um, Xdebug versus alternative methods, right? So we have different methods of debugging code. We talked about um, error logging and, and var dumps and stuff. 